What's up, everybody? Axe Wizard here, working on my game some more, Neurality 3092. Uh, it's, I've gotten a few things done since the last episode, so let's jump in. So, first things first, you'll notice I've got more AI, uh, I, I, not more, more, I, I don't have more AI art. I got rid of more AI art. Uh, I also had this thing called Boost, so I can get away from these guys for, for a few. So I got this little boost bar over here, and it also shows the current speed I'm traveling at, which is pretty cool. You can see that my mini-map is also updated with uh, my own hand-drawn art and the markers, too. So that's pretty pretty snazzy. I like that. And uh, I added boost. That's that's awesome. I'm really liking that. I'm still working on, on, the, on the particle effects. Like, I'm not sure what I want to do for it. This little ring that kind of pops out when you boost... It's not turning out how I wanted it to, and then the little streaming particles, um, they just go away as soon as you, you know, stop pressing the uh, button, and I don't know if I like that or not. And also, they keep going there even if I keep holding it down, I, I don't have any boost, and it just looks silly. <laughs> so, yeah, I've, I've been busy. I've been busy doing stuff here. This is uh, pretty cool here, and then let's see, let's see if I can land. Uh, where's the planets? There they are. Okay, get off me, guys. Oh, God, I'm going too fast. I gotta slow it, slow it down. Okay, slow it down. Let's try, to, uh, let's, let's try to land on Earth. Let's see if we can last long enough so we can, before we die. Come on, there we go. Whew. I still haven't fixed that bug where the projectiles fly through. <laughs> but I replaced... All the art. So I did this. This is like supposed to be like a space station with like ships docking or whatever. But I suck at art, so that's cool. You can see I made my own my own fancy button here. Uh, I'll get into how I did that. I didn't use a button. <laughs> I made it. Uh, so that's fun. And so trade good screen. You can see I've got the buttons here too, and then I've also got the the trade center art. But this is supposed to be like some trade kiosk terminal thing i don't know i just kind of went with it and so let's talk about the goods here so platinum so i drew a lot of this stuff pretty terribly and then just put textures in it you know and it looks looks okay so platinum gold and silver are all using like uh textures for that titanium is also using a, a texture cobalt is using it's using a water texture from a satellite image. I think it was Google Earth or something like that, but it was like zoomed in on the water and I was like, okay, I could probably take that and use that as a texture. <laughs> so uh, yeah, so cobalt using a water texture. That's really weird. Uh, lithium looks like some weird white block of cheese, but I don't know. I, I tried to kind of, uh, I used the old AI art as kind of a, a guide and then just tried to recreate it essentially and for for the most part so like this xenon kind of looks like the old image but this one has a different background than the others i didn't notice that until i loaded it in so i'll fix that later uh yeah helium three it's like a little helium tank or whatever i figured that was kind of cool uh neodymium looks a lot like the ai art one the magnetic metal or whatever Food supplies, I decided to make like a box with like, I don't know, like protein bricks or something in there. I don't know. Medical supplies, I just drew a bunch of random stuff. So I got like a a, a bag of blood or something like that. I got the, the stethoscope. I got like a scalpel. I got a syringe. I got a, a pill bottle, like a little mirror that dentists and stuff use. And then like a roll of gauze or something like that. That looks like a, some wet toilet paper. I don't know. Advanced machinery is kind of like a, a 3D printer or something like that. I figured it looks high tech. Uh, if, yeah, advanced machinery, cool, good stuff. Computer electronics, basically a circuit board. Uh, threw that together. I should have used a more green texture, but you know I'm slightly colorblind, so when I was working on it, it honestly looked green to me. <laughs> so I'm yeah, I'm pretty bad. Uh, ancient fossils. Uh, yeah, this is just. Like a rock. The thing on top is supposed to be a sign, but uh, I don't know. I st uh, you, you get the idea. It's like fossils. And then cultural artifacts is like a vase or something like that. Like an old pottery thing that's got ancient art on it. And this was, uh, this was like 
I was watching Jack Septicai play uh, God of War two a while ago, uh, or uh, the God of War Ragnarok. Sorry, and uh, there was a scene in there where I'm not. I don't want to give any spoilers, but it shows like this old ancient Greek pottery that had Kratos from like the old games or whatever. And I kind of tried to draw that, and that's what I came up with. <laughs> so a dude like fire with like his you know blades of chaos out. I yeah, that's what I drew <laughs> for cultural artifacts. So that's fun. But yeah, so it's been uh, it's been fun making all this stuff work. I've been having uh, fun just playing my game a lot, just running running around and fighting people. So you here you can see I've got the moon. So I drew like since moon you can only really buy helium three from it. I was like, well, what would be good for the moon? Like, how about we just use an actual moon texture, and then we put like this big pump or something like that that's actually harvesting the the helium three and it's keeping it in this big orb thing. I don't know. Like <laughs> it's like a water tower but for helium, and it has like, this cool futuristic door that like you know is, opens up in six pieces or whatever. I don't know, I, I just been having fun. I just been living it up, doing all this cool stuff. But yeah, just want to give the quick update on my games since it's been a few days and I've been playing lots of No Man's Sky and I've got a lot of cool ideas. So for example, the boost, I got that from No Man's Sky because you can, you can hold shift to boost in that game and it makes you go faster. And I like that. I like being able to go faster in a pinch, but I also don't want it to be indefinite, so I could try to outrun enemies. Now, obviously I haven't implemented that for the AI yet. Uh, that's gonna be interesting, but I like the idea of using it to like get away, and I just, I don't know how, how useful it's gonna be once AI gets it, because then they're just gonna be able to boost right after you, but I'm working on it still. Some other cool ideas that I'm gonna steal from No Man's Sky, uh, just unashamed, just unashamedly steal. I'm just gonna take uh, some of their weapon ideas because they had lots of cool weapons in there. So I'm uh, eventually I'm gonna, when I start adding more weapons and stuff like that, I'm gonna draw some heavy inspiration there. Uh, I don't know how to do beams. I, I've been thinking on that. I should probably ask ChatGPT how to do beams. I'm gonna do that right now, actually. Let me boost away. So, chat GPT. Uh, uh, let's see. In Godot 3, how would I make a laser beam that can detect collisions with an area 2D? So, let's see what it says. To create a laser beam that can detect collisions with an area 2D, you can use Raycast 2D, uh, known as a laser beam, and attach it to a parent node that has the area 2D as a child. Here are the general steps to create this setup. Look at that, it's giving me code and everything. Uh, it may not be what I want though. So ready. So Raycast Cast 2. Uh, let's see, how would I style the Raycast 2D? In Godot 3, you can uh, you can style the visual appearance of Raycast 2D by adjusting its shape. The shape property is referenced to a segment shape 2D, which is used to determine the shape and size of the ray. Oh, that's awesome, dude! That's cool. Okay, cool. So that that'll be that'll be a lot easier when I go to to tackle that finally. Okay, let's boost back to all the action because I'm way out of here. <laughs> Wee. <laughs> Because, like, in Game Maker, I tried to make a beam once, and what I ended up doing is I ended up making... Uh, why am I not slowing down? Oh, interesting. So, decelerate doesn't update my, my speed. I gotta fix that. I gotta uh, emit that signal. Um, in Game Maker, I had to make, like, a sprite that would tile, like, uh, like, like on the x-axis or whatever. And then what I would do to make the, the beam is every frame I would uh, draw out uh, every single segment of that and then 
I would detect, you know, hey, uh, I would detect like every step, like, hey, do I, do I need to draw another one? Okay, draw another one. Hey, do I need to draw another one? And I would just keep checking that for however long it would go up to a maximum distance. So it, it would go off, off the screen. And then when it would collide with something, it was pretty rough. I wasn't able to make it work that well. So I had uh, another sprite that would be like super huge of like the, the beam actually impacting. And I would draw that like at the part where uh, the beam would hit something. And that kind of covered it up pretty well. And so my beam would have three parts. It would have the, the origin, which has like this big burst. And then it would have the actual uh, beam, which you know you could tile basically. And then it would have the, the end uh, impact part. And that was how I would manage to make a beam, but it was pretty rough. And I felt like that was pretty, pretty inefficient to have to calculate that every time. It took me like two hours to code. <laughs> With Godot, it looks like I can just get it working in a few. So who knows, maybe next episode I'll have more weapons. But I think next episode I'm gonna focus on working on my Starship map, which I'll get into. Uh, but yeah. This is uh, what I've been... I've just been, like, playing my game a bunch. I've been, like, just flying around and just fighting with other ships. So we can see I got lots of green ships dominating here. I got some little drone here. It's going to get slapped. Boom. Suck that missile, fool. So, yeah, I got all my green homies here. So for testing code, I'm just alternating uh, uh, factions right now. But what I think I might do is I might make it detect, uh, you know which which faction has more ships and then it will uh, make a ship for the other faction that way it'll be more equal because right now it's basically a slaughter uh is this guy like getting messed up boom but i like the little particle effects like for my explosions and stuff those are particle effects i drew even my missile trails are our particles so it's, it's really neat for me just to see all this moving artwork that i made on this, some silly tablet and just uh, you know, pretty it up with some textures in Krita. I also need to think about something for how uh, how my ships should not stack together, like when they're coming up, uh, when they're coming together. I think I might make it so if they detect that they are colliding with something, they'll try to use uh, their their strafe. So maybe like they'll just go like the other way if they're moving. So for bigger ships, it won't do much, but it, it'll look a lot more natural than uh, than other stuff. You can also see I replaced the the, the, the sprites or the, the particles for my thrusters. So I just drew those. And uh, yeah, <laughs> so that's kind of interesting. But yeah, so let's get into the code on what I've done. So to listen to me ramble. So we talked about re replacing all the AI art. I actually, if we, if we go to my sprites down here, there's not even a generated folder here. I got rid of it entirely. So that was just a matter of you know, making sure I had the replacement art asset ready to go, add it in, and then just replacing the texture property on, you know, whatever I was doing, like whether it be a particle effect or uh, a sprite or, or something like that. Um, I started work on a tool to create a star system map. I think I'm going to save that for probably the next episode because I created an actual external tool um, that will allow me to like plot and map out and, and add, add all the stuff, but it's, it's, it's in a rough state. I guess I'll just show it really quick. Can I, can I add another window here? I can, uh, star system mapper tool. So with this tool, all I do is, um, it saves stuff to a file. So what it, what it lets me do is uh, I can click and uh, I can name a system, so I'm gonna name this something like, I don't know, like Alpha Prime or, or, or whatever I wanna call it, right? And then in this system, I can specify what locations are there. So for example, I can be like Earth, Moon, maybe I might add Mars, Neptune, Jupiter, right, etc. And then I can say that, that this belongs to a faction. I can put, uh, you know, uh, Harmonious Synthocracy. I'm gonna make this a drop down. This is just a super rough thing. You can see like my fields aren't even, like I'm not even using containers. I'm just putting stuff there, super big fields. Like the buttons don't, aren't even uh, symmetrical. I just threw it together super quick because I didn't care. So once I create that, you can see it adds this node over here that, uh, 
Yeah, so you can see it's star system, alpha prime, faction, harmonious, syndocracy, locations, Earth, Moon, Mars, Jupiter, all that stuff. So, and what that does is it, is it outputs it to a file that will uh, basically make JSON, which is JavaScript object notation, which if you go into... Uh, if you go into uh, a Godot, it's basically a dictionary. So I'm going to have a dictionary of all the star systems that's going to determine like, you know, what, what locations are there, what position on the map that that location's at. And then so I can use this tool to quickly plot that stuff out. That way I'm not just typing it up in code, making a bunch of mistakes. Uh, I can just type it out here and put those uh, locations together because I want to make a map that's kind of like this, like from uh, Escape Velocity Nova. Maybe not like with this coloration stuff, but um, so it's like it's just a super basic map that shows like where you're at. So, for example, here it is. So this place right here, this is Seoul. This was like Earth. So this is like where you start out. Right. And so all these different uh, systems here, these are all part of, uh, I think, like the Federation or whatever it was. So this would be like the harmonious uh, syntocracy. But I want to make this really big map that will probably even be be bigger than this but you can see how every time you go to a node it has like this line leading to it so this is a a, a neighboring star system so you can teleport to that and uh, not teleport but you can hyperdrive to it basically so that's what I, that, that, that's what my goal is there and i'm just I'm just implementing this and this isn't like a, an original concept. Obviously I'm copying a, a really old game. Escape Velocity Nova has a lot of good memories for me as a kid. Um, I think even like Space RPG 3, which is a, a game I had on my phone for a while. I think they even did the uh, same thing. So it's not like it's a an original idea to do it this way. I think it's, I think it's an effective way. Even like, uh, e e even No Man's Sky does something like this, but, but 3D and obviously more modern and, and, and snazzy, but it's the same kind of thing to where, you know, you kind of pick what node you're going to, and then you boost and you hyperdrive to that, to that, that, that system. So I'm going to keep that same thing. Cause it makes sense. Uh, I don't, I don't think flying endlessly through space is going to be a very fun. I mean, you could currently do that right now, but it just you, you just won't you just won't get anywhere. So, yeah. So th I'm working on a tool that will do this for me. That will give me the data in JSON format. So if I go here, you know, I just paste it in like what was in uh, what my file had generated. So you can see here, I've got the name of of the star system, what position it's going to be on my map. Uh, what locations it's going to have, any neighboring star system it has, whether the player has discovered it or not yet, and then if it belongs to a faction. So I think that's all the data that I'm going to need. The only thing I might, I might tweak is for the locations, I might need to actually make those dictionaries too. So for every location, it's going to have a dictionary that will have... Um, for example, it's going to have what position the uh, planet should be created at when you go to to that, when I set up the uh, scene for, for that system. So I'm going to have to store that there too. And I think, yeah, so I'll cross that bridge when I get there. But that's what I'm working on. Just this sort of master JSON file that's going to have all the information about all my locations so I can build a cool map kind of like this. But that's the goal. All right, let's go back into this. So I also added boost and I added custom buttons. So let's talk about boost. So if we go to my ship here, you can see I added some variables here, just boost duration and boost duration max. So these are things that you can set on the ship editor. So if I just pop open a ship, if I go to ships, ship one, you can see over here on the right, I've got all these various uh, variables that are exported that I can set from, uh, from my editor here, from the inspector. So I set boost duration before, so this, this duration is in seconds. Um, and yeah. That's what I did for, for boost as far as just code wise, uh, as far as like variable wise, I mean, so I declared those two variables and then 
I also declared a signal when my boost uh, changes so that my UI can uh, uh, reflect that accurately. And then how I'm using that is I added an action here. So var action boost. So this is just what I'm using to, to allow either the AI or player to control the ship. So if I just control it, if I just program the ship to just respond to these uh, flags here, and then I can have AI trigger the, these same actions just the same as if I was pressing a button, it would it, it has the uh, same behavior. It does the uh, same thing. So that way I'm not having to program custom stuff like on top of doing uh, algorithmic decision making for the AI. Um, we can just stick to the t t to the same controls. So that's what I did there. And let's see, what else did I do for shield? So no, not shields, but uh, boost. So I added this. Uh, if uh, so, I had to make a tweak to to how I was handling max speed. So because you're boosting, you're going to be over your max speed. So before I was boosting, and like n n nothing would happen because I wouldn't have my max speed. So what I'm doing is I'm declaring a variable called final max speed, which is a, a, a type float. And I'm just setting it to be the current max speed. Now, if we are actually boosting, so action boost is true. We're checking, hey, do we have any boost duration left? So do we have any boost juice? Um, if we do, then cool. We're gonna we're gonna uh, add our boost vector here, which is we're gonna make a another vector similar to how we're making our motion vector earlier, and we're uh, setting this to be uh, one and zero, which is gonna be facing to the right. And then what I'm doing it is I'm taking that that normalized vector and, and then I'm rotating it to where our our rotation is, and then I'm multiplying it by our boost speed. Um, multiplied by delta. So uh, boost speed, I forgot that uh, that variable too. Let me go back up here. Here we go, boost speed. The additional uh, speed a ship will travel while boosting. So I set my boost speed to 900 here after testing because 240 was like way too slow, it was hardly, hardly anything. So I might just set that to be the, the default for testing. But yeah, so I have a boost speed. So the, that's how much that's how far you travel in a second, basically. So this is giving you an additional 900. So if your max speed is 300, you're going like three times as fast, so which is awesome. So it makes it feel like you're actually boosting, which is cool. So once we've got that, I'm applying that, and I'm also add, and then I'm adding that boost vector to my motion, which is what which is the, my my vector that I'm already adding stuff to. So if I'm if I'm turning or accelerating or trying to uh, slow down, it's it, it's accounting for that change in motion, and this boost vector is just being added to to that motion vector. And I'm also subtracting my boost duration by just the uh, elapsed time since the last time process ran. And then I'll say we're boosting, adjust the max speed accordingly. So this is where I am adjusting my final max speed to be max speed plus boost speed. So the maximum speed that we could go at full boost should be 1200. And yeah, that's pretty cool. So then we're gonna uh, emit a signal that our boost changed. And then I'm, I'm setting my action to boost here to be false if we don't have any boost juice, because I, I had a bug earlier that was, I could be, if I was holding down shift and I, and I ran out of juice, I wouldn't start slowing down. I would just stop. I would just go back to my normal max speed. So I'd be going for 1200 to like 300. And then it felt really weird. So I set that to be false. And then that way my uh, code down here, which is where I'm, I'm ensuring our velocity does not exceed our maximum speed. Speeds differ if boosting. So what I'm doing here is uh, uh, if we want to slow down gradually rather than than speed drastically and suddenly changing like it was when it was coming out of a boost before what i can do is i can say hey are we actually boosting right now if we are actually boosting and we're already at our max speed which is what we calculated um then we're just going to hard cap it so if we if we're going 1300 but we're only supposed to be going 1200 just hard cap it at 1200. um however if i'm not boosting and all of a sudden now my max speed is 300 as a, and I'm going 1200. I don't want to just hard cap that. I want to gradually slow that down. So what I'm doing, uh, I have this cap speed, which is probably a poorly named variable, but it's, uh, it's 
it's just the speed that which it's going to bring you down to the cap is is how i was thinking about it it, I should have called it like decay speed or something like that because it's basically going to be how, fa how fast your speed decays back to your normal max. But I did it at 4. So normal deceleration speed is like 0.5. So this is 8 times the speed it would be to normally uh, decelerate. So it's going to be a, 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 a bit quicker. So I'm getting that difference between that. And then if the difference is less than zero, then that means applying the, the full cap speed would make the ship go slower than your, than your normal max speed, which would penalize the player, which I don't want to do. So, you know, if you were going, uh, if your max speed's 300 and you were going 301 and, it, and say, for example, just, just for rough math, it knocks you down to like 290, that's not going to be good. So if i'm detecting that hey if that difference is like less than zero that means that it's going to go negative that means that just we're just going to hard cap it again uh, otherwise we should be safe to apply our full cap speed so i'm just taking the current velocity which is like what, what we're traveling at and i'm just subtracting that cap speed from it and uh, i'm just mo i'm just normalizing the uh, uh the length of the the vector and then i'm just doing new speed again uh, I'm just multiplying it by new speed to just give it that that slowdown effect. And then after I do all my calculations on velocity, I'm moving myself based on our, our velocity. So it's a lot of the similar logic I did before. So for example, if you see if you see I've got uh, action decelerate here. So new speed is I'm getting the uh, velocity length minus our deceleration speed multiplied by delta. And then I'm just saying, hey, make sure it's not negative. And then I'm applying the speed. So I'm doing the same thing. I'm normalizing the uh, vector and then multiplying it by our new speed. So if our vector was going, you know, a thousand and our new speed, our, our new speed would be, I don't know, 900. This would normalize it back to one. So your, your speed would be one. Then multiplying it by your new speed puts it back to 900, puts it back to your actual n new speed. Um, yeah, vector math. I'm probably rambling a lot. It's a bit late. I'm just excited. I'm tripping over my own words, so I apologize for that. So let's see, let's, let's go back to boost. So I also have this, uh, I have this handle boost duration here. And, oh, I have this uh, emit speed changed. Yeah, I should do that too. Emit signals. Let me fix this bug really quick here. So I, I had a bug where if I was if I was decelerating, um, it wasn't updating that uh, vector. So I'm just gonna add that here. Emit signal that our vector our speed changed. Because before I was only tracking if uh, if motion changed. So if motion was like not zero, um, not a zero value vector, then we were emitting that signal. But yeah, okay. So I could potentially be uh, emitting it twice, but whatever. This this works out. So let's talk about handle boost duration. So if we go to this this function here, so this was just handling the incrementing of boost duration. So when it recharges, I wanted it to recharge slower. So what I'm saying is, hey, if we already have, uh, if we're already like at our max, don't do anything. Um, if we are recharging, we want the boost to recharge like 10 times as slow. So I'm just taste, I'm taking Delta and multiplying it by 0.1, which is just 10%. And that gives us the, the slowly recharging boost. So, you know, it should take, it should, uh, it should take 40 seconds to recharge a four second boost is basically what it's going to do. I'm ensuring they're all, that we're also not overcharging. So I'm saying, uh, making sure that we are not, uh, over our max. And then I'm just emitting a signal that our boost has changed and that's it. So now the signals are being used by my UI, um, so when I go to run the game, before I was constantly polling a uh, player in my in my process event to to get their values and then echo that or not echo but set the labels and stuff of all these uh, 
things here so i would update my percentage calculation all that stuff now i'm only doing that when the values change so you can see now my boost is slowly recharging which is really cool there we go but yeah so like my shields my health and my boost and my speed only update when it actually changes so now we can test and you can see that my speed is now slowing down as I'm decelerating. Oh god, I have to get out of there. So now my speed's going super fast. But yeah. So that's basically it for, like, boost. It, it I kind of cobbled it together, to be honest. It's kind of rough how I sprinkled all the code in there. Um, it's probably not as tidy as I like it, but it's what we got. Uh, let's see get rid of all this stuff because we talked about that already custom button. Let's talk about our custom button I made a custom button So if we go to hand-drawn button You can see I made a button so how I did this is there's not even a button node on here I tried working with like a texture button, but I just couldn't get it to do what I wanted it to do so how I made my custom button is I start out with this margin container so that it will um, it will dynamically uh, scale to what it needs to be. So as I add text to this text field, you'll see like everything changes. So I can do everything changes. And so you can see that that container is making sure that it's always taking up uh, the exactly the amount of space that, that the button needs. So that's what I did there. Next, I have another margin container to give me a little bit of, uh, of uh, internal padding, basically, because then I have this texture rectangle, which is just my little metal texture that I threw in here. Um, I got a few other ones that I can try out, but this is the best looking one so far. And then once I got that, I have uh, another margin container to give a little bit more uh, internal padding. And then I have my label, which is a text thing. And I also have this thing called Disable Mask, which I set to be visible when I want the button to look uh, d disabled. And then finally, I have this 9-patch rectangle, which is just a... a <laughs> I, I took like a little ruler and I drew a straight line on my uh, pad. And then I, I, I emailed that to myself. And then in Krita, I cut that out in chunks to make a box... But I was able to basically make this like hand-drawn border that is also uh, symmetrical. And so this is just going around the box. I was thinking I might actually recolor this to, to just be pure white. And then I could change the uh, modulate property of the uh, texture. Um, so, or the, the modulate property of it so I could I could have it be different colors because if you have it black it's always going to to be black no matter what tried uh, no matter what what modulation you try to do to it uh, the only the only modulation that that affects black is just alpha um, and that's just the uh, transparency so I rigged that up and it works pretty well well I was able to down here in the texture region I, I was able to define my slices so I, did, I, I wasn't able to find a clean way to get the, the texture to work here. So I just made a outline and then I have my texture here and I have this set to just keep aspect covered and also expand is on. And that is what lets it, uh, lets it uh, just like uh, dynamically handle the uh, texture. So as I type in this text field again, hello, 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 well, you can see the uh, texture is not like distorting what it's doing is it's basically zooming in on the image to just keep that one spot rather than taking a square texture and then like making it a, he a really huge rectangle it's taking that that same texture and it's just zooming in on a little on a little slice of it so that's what it, that's how that's working there and it works pretty well so you can see here now i have the uh, entire texture and as I type, the texture is zoomed in on, and the button just keeps getting bigger and bigger, and it just keeps going like, oh my god, forever. Like, when is this going to stop? Like, jeez, this is really bad. <laughs> right? So that's how that works. Pretty cool. Now, 
how I had to, to make this interactive is on my container here under the mouse section, I had to set this mouse filter to be ignore for everything above my uh, texture rectangle because I was having problem with margin container detecting mouse clicks no matter what I did, but I was able to get the texture rectangle that I use for my texture here. I was able to get that uh, to detect clicks. So I have the mouse filter here set to ignore, which means that when I click on this, uh, these these uh, these these UI elements here, these control nodes, are going to ignore that uh, input, and it's going to keep passing it down the tr uh, the uh, tree until it gets to something that might actually do it. So I have this set to pass, um, and it still works. So pass will uh, take the input, and if it hasn't uh, if it hasn't done anything with it, it'll keep passing it on down to the children. So since I don't know if I needed to add more stuff to this later on, I just did it here. Now I have a small script on here and how I handle it is, um, I have an export variable that determines like what the uh, button text is, is going to be. So when I add this button to a scene, I can just set that text property and, on my ready when it's added to and when it's a actually added to the uh, scene uh when the game runs we're setting our label text to be whatever text we set we also have this uh disabled variable so if if i want my button to be disabled i just i just set this flag to be true and then what i do is i have this uh color rectangle that i have set as mask and i just set my mask to be visible because my mask already makes it look uh, disabled, and that, that's all I'm doing there. Now I have to detect this in the process event. So this is a, this is this is code that's constantly running every frame, which is really inefficient. I tried to rig it up in a way that would let me do it in a, in a signal, but Godot or uh, Chat GPT was trying to tell me how to do something with like a uh, setter and and, and getter. Um, for variables and it just everything was telling me to do it wasn't working and then when I, when I looked in, in in the documentation i wasn't able to get that to work either so i just went with the good old fallback of well i'll just check every frame and hey if it's uh if it's disabled make that visible if it's not disabled make it false and so this is something that i want to optimize later i'm going to put a to do optimize this mess And then I have these auto-generated functions. Uh, so in my, in my, uh, so I connected some signals. So if we go back to the 2D scene here uh, under Node, uh, I select my texture rectangle. So there's a mouse entered uh, signal that it comes with, and there's also GUI input. So GUI input is what does a lot of the heavy lifting. So we go back to the script. You can see on my GUI input event, which is an auto-generated auto function when connecting signals from the node editor, I'm just checking a few things. Hey, are we disabled? If we are, do nothing. Um, determine if we are clicking the left mouse button. So if, if the event is not input event mouse button, it's not a mouse button event, do, do nothing. If the event is not a uh, button index, I could probably, I don't, I don't need to use not here. I can just do dozen equals. So if event button index is not uh, button left, it's not it's not a, a left click, uh, do nothing. And then if not event is pressed, uh, it's not a click, do nothing. So, you know, I'm gonna keep that same convention of, of just using not, I think it looks cleaner. And then, so by this point, if we haven't returned, that means that we have a a left click. So we're gonna play a sound. So I'm I, I'm playing the uh, the button click sound using my my audio manager, and I'm also emitting this signal called clicked, which I declared up here. And then so what whatever this button gets added to. I can connect this signal to whatever I, I'm adding it to, and then I can determine behavior for that. And then so if, uh, if the parent wants to change the uh, text or set the disabled, it can do that. 
So that's what I did there, and uh, it works pretty well. Uh, again, this this part here is not optimal, not at all. Uh, so I need to to figure that out. But yeah. Anyway, that's what I got. I am going to get this edited and uploaded, and then go to bed. And I will see you guys in the next video, where hopefully I will be working on my i'll have a working starship map so my my ideal goal for next video is in addition to having my my tool working i want to be able to oh that's a bit of a lofty goal i want my tool to be finished is what i want that that's the goal what obviously what i want to have happen is is have that, that information imported in the game and then you know have working locations and stuff and i might be able to swing that i might not it depends on what issues I run into, but yeah, that's, that's what we got. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate it. And I'll see you in the next video.